So, I have a problem. I don't mean to alarm you guys, but I pride myself on being open and transparent, and there's just some things that need to be said. I've been going back and forth judging if I should make a video on this, because it would mean showing you a side of myself I know none of you would want to witness. It's good to live in our perceptions, but I just can't be a fraud like the greats. Buggy, King, my twin brother Tamir. Nope, when I made anime content, I promised that I would stand on business and be my honest self, and that's why I feel compelled to do this. So buckle up while I spread the cheeks of my heart and let rip the foul stench of truth. So get your gas mask ready, cause this is a doozy. Okay, so uh, here it goes. I love romance villainous fantasy manhwa. There, I said it. I know some of you might be leaking gallons of respect by the second, and to that I say, fair play, I probably deserve it. I might play it off like I'm some rugged gigachad who enjoys his intense battle shonens that showcase the darkest and most brutal battles in history, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I'm just some guy that likes to turn my brain off, drink some tea, and read a couple of romance stories. Well, it started with a couple cause it slowly turned into a rabbit hole of love and degeneracy. Cause let's call a spade a spade. I am not the target demographic for this stuff. It's almost exclusively women who all have impeccable taste because honestly, this stuff is so gas. So let me put you onto some game and I can fill you in more on what exactly this genre is about. Villainous manhwa is rather interesting because it combines a lot of other genres like isekai and regression and mixes them together with the central plot of some type of romance setting. Also, for those who just don't know, manhwa is basically manga from Korea, so there you go. But the basic premise is that you get a reincarnated protagonist who wants to change her fate as the villainess of the story, where the outcome is almost always death or some type of harsh punishment. Sometimes it's a regression, where they originally live out their lives, make all the mistakes that they make as the so-called evildoers, and then they die and restart from square one before everything initially went downhill. But 99% of the time, it's an isekai, where the fantasy world is embodied by some random romance novel that they read in their previous lives, and then they reincarnate and get isekai playing the role of the antagonist. And you think there'd be any distinguishing differences, but nope, they're like all the same. There's like hundreds and thousands of these stories that follow the exact same premise to a T. It's literally the McDonald's of romance. It's addictive, it's bad for you, and I love every second about it. But yeah, if you've read any amount of regression or isekai series, a lot of this stuff will seem pretty standard. But don't worry, no one is getting reincarnated as a vending machine, a hot spring, or even a pig. Yes, these are real anime. It's all captured in this upper class nobility setting. While the majority of isekai typically follow some otaku main character as he traverses a fantasy world, becomes overpowered, and accrues a harem of women and, well, cat girls. The protagonists of this genre are not that down horrendous. They're always women. Ergo, why it's the villainous genre and they effectively make their mark, change the game, and accrue a harem of dudes. Kind of. It's a bit more complicated and, well, romantic. But I guess the biggest difference is because these women have knowledge of their potential futures, they use the information they have at their disposal to navigate the upcoming trials and tribulations that come storming their way, because they always do. Usually, whatever trauma from their past lives or from the novels that they read becomes their compass in how to move headstrong into their upcoming days dangers as they overcome kingdoms, dukes, monarchs, each with their own baggage, and some with extremely toxic levels of corruption. And that's like the overarching similarity that you will find in these stories. It's all royalty business. You got your honorable nobles who have a moral compass and preach justice, usually on the MC side. And then you got your typical snobby, flaunt your arrogance and wealth at the commoners type personas with the many, many face-punching characters that try to oppose the villainous. I swear, it's actually actually insane how many evil stepmothers there are in this stuff. And they're all awful. There's nothing redeeming about them. Just one note, hateable villains that are evil for evil's sake, and that's kind of the beauty of it. Because they're irredeemable pieces of garbage, it makes it pretty entertaining when they get humbled or put in their place. It's extremely cathartic. Now, something important to note is the perspective of the story that these mon would take, because remember, these women are supposed to be the villains, so either the world they inhabit will treat them as such, or an omnipotent influence will try to force them down the path so 
though their stories play out with the same outcome, with them taking the L and the heroines taking the W. Now, because these stories embody everything you want in a fantasy world, if you're actually the target demographic, the male leads are almost always the love interests of the villain, just like in any classic rom-com type stuff. Despite the mistakes and burdens and animosity that existed in either the original story in the isekai setting or the previous life in the regression, they ultimately form bonds of love and grow genuine attachments for each other. But it's not always that easy. Sometimes the villainess's past catches up with them and they have an inability to move forward, and sometimes people just get in their way. That would be the heroine, who's almost always a wolf in sheepskin, and the sole reason that I have trust issues. But it's actually crazy. You get these women who seem so innocent and wholesome and nice, but instead they're just the devil incarnate, and the original fantasy novel or whatever just glazes them into next Tuesday. But I like this flip because the villainess and the heroine slowly end up switching roles because the MC is usually just a good person, like Santa Girl, and I like it. And the antagonist isn't. Shocker, who would have guessed? But it's a very cool duality to not read a book by its cover. Now, I was initially going to run through a bunch of recommendations, but after writing the seventh villainous title with the same mind-numbing fantasy tragedy, I thought I would spare us all some time and just speed run through some titles and focus on the ones that are genuinely good, so you're welcome. And because of the copy-paste nature of these stories, there's still gonna be a lot of overlap, so just bear with me. First starting with I Will Live the Life of a Villainess. A girl dies in a fatal car crash and is reincarnated as the villainess of the story and is fated to die a grim death but knowing the fate that awaits her, she does her best to rewrite her destiny. Bar for bar, this is about as standard as it gets, but the character she specifically embodies was originally this lovesick, obsessive freak who was thirsty for the crown prince, but the first thing she sees as she's reincarnated is this dude cheating on her in a tricycle, so she slaps him in the face and you gotta respect it. But she isn't the only one who got reincarnated, so does the male lead, who's the crown prince's older brother, and the narrative follows their schemes and love Love story and it's pretty entertaining. Next is the tyrant that wants to be good, which is a regression story where the villainess became this bloodthirsty ruler who killed everyone to make it to the top. But after her execution, she regresses to her previous self as a child. And not wanting to make those same mistakes, she aims to become a better person and live a simple life. Also, her dad just sucks in this whole thing like he's a total asshole. So it makes it a lot more emotionally gripping. And next we got I Am the Villain, which is a pretty straightforward title and basically follows the same plotline as the first one. But the art is absolutely gorgeous. The MC and the heroine both reincarnated into this world and they were best friends in their previous lives. And also the original villainess and heroine are technically still alive and present in this world. So it's a pretty chaotic mess and I like it. And all I'm gonna say is that I understand why women would simp after the male lead cause uh, even I was kind of simping after him. I get it. Next is divorcing my tyrant husband. The MC is reincarnated as this villainess and knowing the future that she has in store for herself, she aims to break up with the king and goes out of her way to make herself as unwantable as possible. The only problem is is that everything she does just makes everyone fall in love with her, and the heroine gets shafted in the process, which is hilarious. And finally, my favorite of the bunch is not your typical reincarnation. This is the darkest one. Both the MC and the villainess she reincarnates as suffer brutal trauma from their past, and she incarnates into an empty unloved marriage and is continuously pitted as this evil person and almost inhuman. And that's because the author of this world actually has influence, and they're doing their best to make sure that the villainess doesn't live a good life. She's literally fighting against fate, and out of all the ones I mentioned, this is the one that I recommend the most. Now, there's a genuine reason why I wanted to make this video outside of the scope of my normal anime content, so I'll be taking off this metaphorical mask and I'll be getting real with you guys for a second. Growing up, I had a pretty difficult time fitting in. I was constantly molding myself to what others thought or expected of me, and just had trouble being myself. The reason I started content creation in the first place was so I could talk about the stuff that I like and enjoy and not be judged for it. I don't want to be scared about showing these sides of myself, even if it can be cringy or goofy. I just want to be me, and hopefully that resonates with some of you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and in the future I plan to branch in and explore more manhwa and stuff like this, so this is just the start. But if you made it this far, like and subscribe, and with that, I'll catch you guys in the next video.